What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel in another episode of Watch Before You Buy. Today we are talking about the rear diff brace for the Infinity Q50 2014 and beyond. Make sure you watch this video before you buy it, trust me. So we got the rear diff brace for the Q50 right here from Pride Auto, Pride Auto, Pride Auto LLC on Instagram. I think it's prideautollc.com as well. I'll put a link in the description below. Of course, like always, we'll go over what it is, what it's supposed to do, uh, does it actually work? And then I'll talk a little bit about whether or not you should buy it because we've already installed this and we've already tested it out as well. And I got some really good video, which if you watched my um, installation video of this rear diff brace, um, you saw some of those clips, but I have more clips that I wanted to dedicate or use for this uh, this review video specifically. So let's get right into it. So if you watched the unboxing or the installation video for this rear diff brace, you kind of know what it's about. But if you're new to the channel, uh, the rear diff brace is meant to eliminate or at least dramatically reduce the flex uh, from your rear diff and your uh, rear subframe. Um, it connects to the lower part of the rear differential cover and then this part attaches to the subframe itself uh, so when you know you you try to launch your vehicle and the car is under load uh, that rear diff flexes on its at its mount um, in the rear uh, subframe this keeps it more rigid you want to try to put as much torque down to the ground as efficiently and effectively as possible. If there's flex in your subframe or in your rear diff where it mounts to the subframe, some of that some of that torque is being absorbed or you know it's being reduced in that flex. So if you can make it more rigid, it it directs that torque directly to the ground. And if you're getting good grip with a good set of tires, uh, it should improve the uh, capabilities of your car. You know, sort of in that straight line launch scenario. So uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's practical in terms of its functionality and it should work in theory. Uh, it looks like a pretty good design, uh, but as you saw in that installation video, I was able to get some really good uh, footage from underneath the car with the GoPro and we actually got a, a glimpse at how the thing works or if it works. I only used some, some of the clips uh, in that installation video because I wanted to save the footage for this watch before you buy video specifically. It's a pretty common part among other platforms. Uh, I think Z1 and some other companies offer them for the G and the Z cars, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it's about time there's one available for the Q. However, I did have an issue with it. Before I say too much, let's take a look at some of the footage from underneath the car. Some before installation footage, and then we'll follow it up with some footage that I got after installing it. And you tell me if you can see a difference.
interesting. No, uh, first of all, I was expecting there to be more flex uh, before this was installed. So factory uh, setup really isn't that bad. And it's probably because the car has relatively low miles. Uh, so there isn't as much flex in that bushing uh, where the uh, rear diff mounts to the subframe. I was expecting there to be more. I was expecting to see some dramatic movement at launch and even uh, you know, from a roll, there really wasn't that much. So that was impressive. Another thing that surprised me is we have the rear subframe collars, uh, the subframe bushing collars from Z1 Motorsports installed in this car, uh, which I could feel immediately. Uh, um, the tires break loose a little bit easier and I could just kind of feel a little bit more, uh, feel the car being a little bit more rigid uh, in a number of different scenarios. But I was surprised to see how much that rear subframe is still flexing as well, even with those collars. Uh, so I was surprised by a couple of things. One thing, however, that really surprised me, and I, I should, maybe I shouldn't say it surprised me because I had a little bit of a question as I was installing this, um, but you may have seen it as well. Even after installation, there is still a lot of flex in that rear diff. And let me tell you my theory as to why. Okay, here we are underneath the car, and you can see how this brace fits, mounts to the lower portion of the diff cover, uh, which is all well and good. It's designed pretty well and it fits up uh, really nicely. Uh, there may be a little bit of wiggle room or it might not be completely 100% flush, but overall uh, it's designed and manufactured really well. However, you can see how large this hole is. And this is about the same diameter of hole on the back side of the rear subframe which is of course just slightly larger than this mounting bolt however on this side of the subframe the opening the mounting hole is much larger so when you fit this bolt through so you can see when you mount this on here so this is pushed all the way through and it's hitting the diff cover um, so when you mount this and you tighten this down, it's, it, it feels tight, but there's so much torque and so much, so much flex uh, in the rear end of this vehicle, it can push this up and down. And using this may reduce that a little bit, but as you can see in the video, there's still a lot of bit of, a lot, a lot of it. There's still a lot of movement. And this is the reason why. So, it doesn't move on the back side. You can see. We're hitting that, but that, you know, that's because we don't have all the mounting hardware in there. But you can see that it does it, you know, it's the hole is small on the back side, but it's so large here, about one inch, that there's a lot of play. So even if you get that mounted up tight, if that rear diff flexes, it's able to slide this. Even if it's only a little bit. That's I think the reason behind why you're still seeing some flex uh, in that video. I think a lot of it, well, obviously, if this hole was smaller or the same size as it is on the back side, you know, about a quarter inch or so, rather than being one full inch, um, that whole problem would be solved. So if there could be a collar of some kind that we could stick in there, actually, I bought a, I bought a couple of things that I'm gonna try to work out. The main issue is this hole being too large. So the concept is definitely there. The you know overall design and quality of the piece is there. So I'm not saying it's not effective at all. I think it probably reduced flex a, a little bit, but I certainly think that it can be uh, refined or there's some things that we can do to make it even more effective. So the theory is there. Uh, it's a practical part. It makes sense. Um, you know, it, again, it's effective in a number of different platforms, and this is really the only option that's out there for the Q50 right now. And I think, uh, like I said, the thought is there. It's really nice. It looks good, um, and I think it will be functional if we make a couple of tweaks. Uh, some of my suggestions would be uh, to figure something out. Where did I put these? My pocket. Figure something out to fill that hole. Um, something maybe like. Something maybe like this that fills that hole in a little bit 
makes their, their see there's still even some wiggle in here um, but it reduces that opening a little bit I got a couple of other things that I'm gonna try out here uh, but I think if we can make that mounting hole smaller and it'll reduce the amount or eliminate the movement because it's moving here right it's it's able to do this inside of that hole uh, so the brace it's really it's not allowing the brace to do what it's supposed to do uh, another thing that I maybe would suggest is a, a larger a, lar a larger contact point where it meets the subframe it's pretty small I mean what is this like you know maybe an inch and a half inch and a quarter or something like that I think it needs something as large as like a fender washer like a maybe a, a two inch uh, face rather than just a small point because that again that rear diff is flexing a lot especially if you're really launching and you get some good grip um, so this is a I mean talking about the VR 30 guys if you're making 450 400 and 500 foot pounds of torque and you get grip and that thing really wants to torque and flex on you this is a very small contact point for that subframe you could potentially potentially bend it dent it crack it uh, so you know spreading that point of contact out allows that pressure to be dispersed over a wider surface area so that'd be my suggestion I don't know if also you can see it's not solid it's like almost as if it's a, a, a pretty thin cylinder with a couple of washers welded on each end and maybe that's the only way or the best way to do it uh, but if you could get like a, a, a truly machined piece of metal with just a hole drilled in it and it's just a solid piece uh, it may be a little bit heavier but I think it'd be you know a little more structurally sound I'd be worried about these welds breaking and then because it's so much wider around inside uh, that it'd be flexing again you'd get the same the same issue uh, so just a couple of tweaks I think this is maybe is well, only as uh, the first revision so this is like v2 uh, to his original so you may tweak this all along the way or figure out a little bit better ways to do things but those would be my suggestions um, again the wider contact patch is not for security reasons like you know fastening it to the subframe it's more to disperse that that energy that uh, torque that force uh, that's being you know applied to the subframe at this really small contact point that force needs to be dispersed over a wider or spread out over a wider surface area to uh, reduce the potential of cracking or denting or messing up the subframe it seems to be you know pretty uh, good quality in terms of its manufacture I like the nice little decal there uh, easy to install 15 20 minutes or so some basic tools um, but I think there just needs to be some tweaks so I'm not saying don't buy it I would say do it but maybe I'll try to figure out uh, some well not maybe I am going to right now I'm gonna try to figure out how to make this a little bit more effective and of course I'll share my I'll share my thoughts as we go a very practical part I think it'd be very useful as long as it functions how it's supposed to and it's just that dang mounting hole it's nothing really about the piece itself it's just that that hole in the subframe that we're using again that's a hole from the manufacturer so it's not really intended for this it's just kind of utilizing it uh, which is you know resourceful but it's not it's not the right diameter that we need so uh, that's my those are my few thoughts right now at this very moment let me know in the comment section below what you think uh, but I certainly think that the uh, the visual from underneath the car shows that there's still some flex and really it wasn't reduced all that much even after installing this uh, and real again nothing against the part itself it all goes back to that hole that we're utilizing in the subframe and we got to address that to make this thing work properly so that's where I'm at hope you guys enjoyed this or hopefully uh, this information was at least useful for you I definitely recommend the part I think the Q50 needs it especially if you do any straight line racing um, and I'll follow up. I'll follow up. Keep working on this thing. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the continued support. Good things coming for Speed Culture Studios onward and upward for the channel, of course, and onward and upward for you guys as well. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.